Yeah, and there we are. Hi, everyone. I was just making sure, see that I can verify that I am live. Uh, so welcome to Truth Bumps. I'm Devin Evans. Uh, this is the premiere of the show tonight, Thursday. Um, Thursday nights are Truth Bump nights. Um, so really, this is a practical discussion, just enriching our relationship to the other side and ourselves. And that's the whole point of this show, um, to be able to just resonate with things that help us um, ground and be more aware so that we can use our abilities. Um, so have you ever heard of something that gives you chills, maybe down your body or across your head? Uh, those are truth bumps. The moment that you hear something and you instantly resonate with it and you just know that it's true for you, um, that's the not so gentle or not so subtle tug from your soul and your guides to say, lean in and pay attention. So grab something to sip and join me tonight for Truth Bumps. Tonight on Truth Bumps, we are going to be discussing how to take the holiday high road. Um, I, and it's not just for the holidays coming up. Honestly, I feel like for the last couple of weeks that we've had, um, we all collectively can use some extra cleansing, protecting, and grounding. Um, the whole reason why I chose this topic is not just for what we've recently been through, what we've been through for this year, um, but also what is to come. Sometimes the holidays are usually or can be a time for high stress, um, stress that we put on ourselves, stress that we receive from others. It can also be um, a time where we just need a little extra TLC love and attention. So, I thought tonight would be a great night to discuss some things that feed into stress and then how to energy, energetically be aware of what's going on, take a step back, and um, try a, full, a few techniques that I'm going to share with you guys tonight that will help you just cleanse, ground, and protect, and we'll go into more about what that means. But for everyone that's joining, thank you. Hi, Hi, Greg. Hi, Danny, Jen, Linda, Kelly. Thank you all for joining. I'm so happy that you could be here tonight. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the comments. I'm trying a new um, software out tonight because I don't like to do anything easy. So new show, new software. Um, so we'll try and catch those comments and be... Um, um, be on top of those so that I can like answer any questions you have and just make sure that you guys are a part of the conversation because that's what this is. Um, I'm also going to, let's see, is this going to let me? So let's see, I just wanted to see if I could share this out, but it's not going to let me. That's okay, we'll do it next time. All right, so, hi Megan, thanks for joining. Um, some of the things that can really stress us out, one of the big indicators is expectations. And I know that... Um, Sometimes we don't like to take a step back and reevaluate, but if we're really looking for a better way to um, go through our days in a way that we can be mindful and understand what's coming up for us when it comes up for us, these um, being able to take a look at the different components that could be causing some of these underlying stressors is really, really beneficial. I'm always a big proponent for knowing why. Uh, something might be coming up or just being aware of it because it's like the moment we become aware of it, the moment it just starts to dissipate. Um, the reason why this is important just to kind of bring this back to um, the spirit of shadow hunters and psychics unite. Our psychic abilities are very much tied to our awareness and our acknowledgement. And I feel like Everyone understands the, 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 the message of intuition. Everyone has a gut check, a sensibility that they can kind of tune into. And that's really where our gifts start. 
Um, and those are directly, I think, correlated with our emotions. If we're having a bad day, we might be closed off. If we're having a really good day, we might be opened up. Or it could be vice versa. Everyone's a little bit individualistic. So bringing attention to these times where we could be closed off, and it's really not just about the holidays, but it could be highlighted during that time, I think really brings us another step closer into making sure that we're acknowledging any experiences that we have and working with those natural gifts in the capacity that we desire to. So back to expectations. We have this um, habit, ability. We like to place expectations, not only on others, but our, ourselves. So for example, let's say for holidays, I expect people to show up to my dinner I expect to be thanked for the work that I do. Now, all of that is, you know, all well and good. It's a, it's a, um, it's a fantastic intention to be able to show the ones that you love how much you care for them, and you hope to receive that in return in some way or another. But when we start placing those expectations and conditions out there, then we automatically start setting ourselves up for a potential failure. So the moment someone comes to sit at our table or the moment we sit at someone's table and let's say they're having a bad day, they may forget to show you the appreciation that you wish to see from them in the way that you wish to see from them. So immediately that causes a trigger or a stressor. Um, sometimes those expectations can be what we have for ourselves as well. So I expect to get all my work done tonight so that I can relax tomorrow. Well, the moment that you don't get your work done tonight, then that adds a stressor. And that also becomes even more tricky because then you start doing like self-doubt, self-sabotage, and it just becomes a downward spiral very quickly. So it really helps to kind of take a step back and evaluate your expectations. Now, that's not to say that we can't have boundaries. Boundaries are another thing that I'd like to talk briefly on. Um, it's my boundary, you know, that if I put myself out there and I don't feel like um, what I'm doing is well received, then it's my boundary that I may pull that back. Or it's my boundary that this is my time and space um, and I may keep this to my time and space without anyone interrupting me. Um, that's similar to an expectation, but really it's a boundary, right? So you're making something for yourself, yourself, and you're trying to uphold that so that you can stay true to yourself. Boundaries are really, really important when we feel like we just need a break or if we feel like that we're being stretched too thin, um, the, the first thing that we can take a look at is where do I need to maybe stop putting myself out there quite as much as I have been, not because I don't love these people, but because I'm just too stretched thin. I need to show myself a little bit more love right now too. Um, so when we look at expectations and boundaries, uh, we want to just be very aware of how we are expecting others to act, show up or behave, or expecting us how to, like how we expect ourselves to perform, show up or behave. Um, I think the easiest way to do that is uh, one thing is to journal. Uh, especially if you're feeling in the moment you've got the time, just if you're feeling really aggravated or irritated about something, just journaling um, about that is a huge gift. And I, and I know, like, I get the eye roll a lot when I say things like journal and meditate, but I, I promote these things for a good reason. Um, I've had personal experience where they've worked for me and I think that they're a really powerful tool um, and sometimes underrated. But my personal experience with journaling has been, you know, writing the scenario at the top of the paper. This happened and it bothered me because, and you just put dot, 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 
And down beneath in the paper, you just start writing every thought that comes to your head. Um, it might be every little wicked detail. It might be insults. The intention is not to show anyone what you're doing or what you're writing, but to get out of your head these thoughts, right? With that, um, the, the, the thoughts that come out and come down, you will eventually get to the point where you're like, oh, something will come out and you're like, I didn't realize that was there. That, that's a little bit of a trick. That's, that's kind of tricky. Um, and I just got the truth bumps when I wrote that. So you might want to try that. And you can journal about anything that has happened in the past, that's happening right now. You can journal about something that you're worried about happening in the future. That is a technique that uh, is, is like fail safe. It, it works every time. Set 20 minutes for yourself and just write and don't stop. And eventually you'll get to that point where you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize that that was going on. I didn't realize that was inside of me. And you're bringing awareness to it. Um, that usually will highlight some of the expectations that we spoke about uh, that could be causing some of these stressors. Um, so just checking on the comments. Hi, everyone. Hi, Nida. Hi, Nate. Donna. So good to see you. Hi, Jen. Hi, Scotty. Um, so the nice thing about journaling is it gives us time and awareness um, to, to, to gain perspective. And uh, someone in the comments mentioned, yep, we definitely, meditating absolutely helps a lot. And we're going to be talking a lot more about meditation. We're going to cover it a little bit tonight. And then next week's show, um, I've got a really nice um, meditation plan for us. So more about that um, in a little bit. But um, with expectations and boundaries, um, aside, the next thing that we really want to do is if we're feeling overwhelmed, if we're feeling anxious, if we're feeling like we're just kind of at sorts, we're not quite sure what to do next, where to go, or how to, um, how to process, maybe we feel a little bit lost. The first thing that we want to consider doing is called cleansing. So, our, um, our phys we have our physical body, um, and we have um, an energetic field around the body. And any time that you've walked into a room and you've immediately been like, oh, wow, that shifted. Like, you might have a sensation or there might be more exci um, excitement, there might be more energy in the room, or you ever hear the phrase, you could cut the tension with a knife, it was was so thick you could cut it with a knife that's that's our energetic field picking up these sensations and processing the um, information um, it's it's I think you know related to empathic abilities it's definitely um, what helps us in our psychic abilities um, but this energy field can definitely pick up sensations and impressions from others and sometimes that's not the best thing for us to have in that moment. Um, so being able to just do a cleanse on our energy helps us get centered back into ourselves, helps us to get grounded back into our energy separate from everyone else's. And we basically, we take control back over what we're feeling and what we're experiencing. It helps us to gain that, that, um, that responsibility over ourselves again. So the way that we cleanse, there's a couple, there's a, there's a lot of ways that we can do this. Um, one way that I've been using a lot this year um, is, is imagining that water is coming down over top of your head and it's slowly coming down over top of your head and over your entire body. And as it's going over your body, it's literally collecting all of the negativity, any residual energy that's not yours, anything that's not serving you for your highest and greatest good. And it's carrying it down all the way through 
to the earth where it can be transmutated and grounded. So it's literally like washing your energy. Um, you can also do this physically in a physical shower, imagining that as the water is hitting you, it's taking away all of the impurities and anything that's not serving you as that water hits your body and takes in, taking it down into the um, drain. Excuse me. So just sitting there, and it literally takes a few seconds to a minute. It depends on how long you want to enjoy it. You can sit there. You know, sometimes we like to sit underneath the water for a while. You can do that energetically, too. Um, sometimes we don't have that luxury. We got to do it quick, right? Like maybe I'm in the mall parking lot, and I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to go into the mall, but here we're going. And you just want to get it done really quickly. Um the nice thing is, is that you can do it anywhere. If you can just take a few min minutes, close your eyes, um, and just envision this, then you can immediately start feeling some relief. So let's say we're in a family setting in the next couple of weeks. Tensions have been high the last few weeks. Um, family settings can sometimes be chaotic and stressful, even in the best of times. Uh, so this year it might be a little particularly prickly. If you find yourself or if you catch yourself in the moment, uh, maybe you're getting aggravated, maybe you're getting stressed out. Someone has said something that bothers you instantly. Taking a moment to step back instead of to react is what's really going to allow you to be able to excuse yourself from the moment, maybe excuse yourself to the restroom, take a moment to close your eyes and do that cleansing. Now, I think with all of this, uh, the, the biggest trick is just practice. So um, we're not always aware of what's going on. I'm so guilty of this too where we're just going and we're going from one task to the next and we're just doing this and we're uh we're making the mashed potatoes and then we're setting the table and then we're talking to someone and we're like literally bouncing off every up everyone else's energy right what can happen in those moments when we lose sight of ourselves is things start to creep up and we don't even know and then all of a sudden, someone says that they don't like the cranberry sauce. And you're like, what? And it, for whatever reason, you're freaking out over something dumb. And then uh, everyone's got like a bad, bad time in that moment. So before you get too burnt out about who likes cranberry sauce and they don't, practicing over the next couple of weeks to just check in with yourself throughout the day is really going to help you in those moments to catch yourself before you react. Um, this also happens to be really important for empaths and like Empath 101. Uh, I know before I started doing intentional work on how to manage and hone my empathic abilities, I was feeling so much. I mean, I was all over the place and it would it would unfold just like that somebody would do something absolutely inconsequential and yet here i am just so taking that deep breath <laughs> taking that deep breath and being able to uh just do a quick cleanse is going to make a huge difference in your experience and how you're showing up for yourself and others in these moments. So um, <laughs> I've actually never been a fan. It's not something that we had at our dinner table very often, but uh, I, I'm sure I, I, I'm sure it's delicious. It's just not something that I incorporated so much into my traditions, but um. So the next thing that we want to think about is what we call protecting. Um, well, I guess let me just take a step back. Other physical ways that you can cleanse is uh, taking deep breaths. 
So I just had an example um, earlier this week where while I was cleansing energetically, I was also incorporating deep breaths, um, you know, inhaling, um, inhaling the good and exhaling the, the negative. Um, that is hugely beneficial. I know it seems simple. It seems um, like it's pretty elementary, but how often do we forget to breathe? Taking those intentional deep breaths is just like so necessary. It's absolutely important. Um, okay, another way is just by taking um, sips of water. When we're cleansing our outside, we can also cleanse our inside. And that water is so beneficial on, in, in both aspects, in both regards. So sipping some water, doing some energetic cleansing, but also doing some deep breathing. All of that is fantastic um, for our, um, our cleansing um, so that so now the protection the protection is more about the energy field it's not a physical protection it's not a protection against evil we're not that's not what we're talking about here um there's that's another topic for another night but it's not it's it's more about just making sure that our energy stays intact with ourselves and it doesn't continue to mingle with others so, um, what can happen is, uh, like an earlier, uh, when we mentioned the cranberry sauce and, and pinging off of everyone else's energy, I, when you're pinging off someone else's energy and you're interacting with them, even just a simple conversation, there is an energy exchange. Our fields are overlapping. There's a possibility that they can leave residual and, um, the problem with that is, is that sometimes, like, you know, people are just in a place that we're not in, and we don't want to be in that with them. We want to be able to empathize with them. We want to be able to help them, but we don't have to actually take that energy on as our own to be able to show them love and kindness, right? So, <clears throat> protecting our energy is the next thing that we want to, we want to do to be able to uh, show up fully in ourselves, Uh, to protect <clears throat> after you've cleansed, you're going to protect um, with a white light. And this is a light that you can imagine flowing over you and creating a bubble around you. And what I like to do is I like to slowly bring the white light down and around me. And I also like to take it into me, right? So it's filling up all of the cells. It's filling up all of the crevices. Um, it's shining light everywhere and just burning away any residual negativity that's not my own. And we're doing this all over our body, all around us, up underneath our feet and creating a bubble. So once we have that bubble in place, then we actually want to push that out maybe a foot from our body and we want to be able to push that out even further maybe another foot and I like to eventually raise that white light out about three feet beyond me so that my energy field is encapsulated with this protection and what that does is that helps um, it helps me to remain present in my space it helps me to understand that if um, someone comes in and it immediately on a different vibration than I am, I am not so quick to, um, to mix with that and succumb to that. So it's more like just, you know, keeping myself clean. So again, that I can show up for myself and others um, in the best and highest way possible. All of this can be done in just a few seconds. If you, uh, it, it, even if you just sit in a living room and you can just pretend like you're sleeping, close your eyes, take a deep breath and have these visualizations, you can be cleansing and protecting anywhere um, that you can focus on it. Um, any, let's see. Hi, everyone who's joining. Thank you so much. Um, 
So I think another physical way to protect is uh, allowing yourself space. I know sometimes in family gatherings, space isn't always something that you can afford. But again, if you can go for a walk outside or if you can excuse yourself just for a moment, having that physical space also allows you time to process anything that you've been receiving and then coming back to the center and um, and, and uh, re-fortifying uh, your protection. So the next thing I like to do beyond cleansing and protecting is a grounding. And we can ground with, um, we can ground physically and energetically. So grounding physically, um, we can go for a walk, go outside, take a 10 minute walk down the, or just walk down the driveway, just getting some air. Um, we can bring ourselves back into the present moment by maybe, um, let's say someone has said something at the dinner table, uh, you can just focus on your food. It's really more about bringing yourself back to that awareness in the present moment and grounding into um, yourself so that you don't get too wrapped up uh, in what's going on or being said. So savoring your food or your drink is a great way to physically ground. Um, you can anchor into an affirmation. So you can create an affirmation for yourself, something like, um, I am, I am full of love and I love, and I, and I, and I offer love, something like that, or, uh, affirmation saying that I am fully protected and safe at all times, or I am at peace and, and have joy. If you feel like you're getting a little too far out of yourself and you're letting things lose control too much, you can bring yourself back to that affirmation and just repeat that a few times in your head uh, until it starts to bring you back into the moment. And again, these are physical ways to ground. We'll cover energetic here in just a moment. And then again, we're going to highlight the, the deep breaths. You can deep breath into your body and feeling, you know, uh, feeling your body raise and lower to be able to physically ground there. Um, I, I love this exercise because it gets me back into my body and not up in my head where the thoughts can kind of take over. Um, not up in my head where people will come in and they may say something uh, that 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 triggers me or that may make us want to react. Uh, it gets me back down into my body and, and making that connection with um, how I'm feeling. So energetically, we can ground with what I call a heart center meditation. And don't let the word meditation throw you off if you're if you're not used to meditating or if you're intimidated by that. This is little, literally a few moments just focusing on your heart. So it looks like you're just closing your eyes. You're taking a deep breath and you're feeling that fill up your chest. And then you literally focus on where our energetic heart center is. Not our physical one so much, but our energetic one. And we kind of check in and see what's going on there. I like to envision that there's a fire in mine, like a nice cozy bonfire. And some mornings, um, if I wake up, or if there's, a, if there's an instance, um, it may just be coals there. And I need to stoke it a little bit more um, so that it gets back up to a bonfire. Or if I'm feeling particularly passionate, it may be a little bit out of control. Um, so someone's got like a rager going on and we may want to contain that just a little bit more um, with some of those soothing thoughts. Um, but checking in with this heart center, I'm envisioning a, a bonfire or a, a ball of light there and just making sure that it's feeling fed and connected is a great way to energetically ground. 
So again, all three of these can kind of just fall into place. You can close your eyes, take a deep breath, cleanse, protect, and ground, and um, bring yourself back into this present moment. Um, so it really is all about just the practice of being present. Um, and, you know, what does that mean? Is there, oh, okay. <laughs> there's a duck on the screen because I'm using Steam, StreamYard and that's their brand. So it's powered by StreamYard. Um, so being present in the moment is just being aware of your surroundings. Taking a moment out and paying attention to the details of the things around you. So, um, you know, if you go to take a sip of water, how does the cup feel in your hand? Um, how does the water feel uh, as you um, take it in? Um, what is the weather like? What is the room like? All of these help us stay present in the moment. Now, the reason why that's particularly important is if we are working actively with psychic abilities, which I intend to go more into in, in other shows down the road. If we're working with psychic abilities or even just being aware of different energy sensations, right? We have to be present in the moment. So um, we can't possibly be uh, aware of subtle changes or shifts in our environment if we're sitting here too focused on something. It's like, have you ever, heard, have you been focused on reading something and someone comes in and just starts talking and you don't even hear what they say? Well, that's often what happens. Like if, if our guides are trying to listen or trying to reach out to us or if our, um, if we have, a spirit walk into the room who's trying to get our attention. Um, that's, you know, that's us not being present or checking in or taking the time to pause and just notice our surroundings. Um, the same is true with, you know, interacting with family or during stressful times. If we're not, if we're getting too wrapped up in the news or too wrapped up in conversation that's happening at any time we start to lose connection to ourselves and that's when thoughts can come in and they can um we may not even be aware of what we're thinking but yet they're still affecting our energy and our emotional state so i can't stress enough how you know being present in the moment being aware, practice awareness in everything that you do, taking the time to engage all of your senses, not just the five that society likes to talk about, but even, you know, the ones out there that uh, we like to discuss a little bit more in psychic abilities, bringing those all in and um, taking practice in that present moment. Let's see what's going on in the chat. The duck's getting a lot of attention. <laughs> so, uh, you meant that, like all this talk about the duck. All I can think about is um, a Christmas story where the family, their turkey gets eaten by the neighbor's dogs and they have to go and have duck at the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> so that's a great way to stay present. <laughs> and turn a negative into a positive. Um, let's see. I think. Um, so when we're, we're talking about just keeping level-headed and grounded, um, just understanding when something comes up, what's happening there and having the space and the boundaries to be able to take a step back for that cleanse, protect and grounding is really what's going to um, do the trick for you. So <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite, favorite movies. Um, yeah. I think 
um, at this time, like, I, I, I feel like just taking that and making that a practice over the next couple of weeks, just taking daily time um, to make this a habit will help you catch yourself in the moment. And it really, it's practice that, um, that makes the difference. Um, and, and setting the intention every day, I think, uh, really helps to kind of concrete that in and make it intentional. So anytime that we're starting a new habit, sometimes we just don't, we don't always get it right away and that's okay. Um, as long as we're not, uh, like beating ourselves up over that, we just say, whoops, okay, I'm going to try again. Because eventually what happens is you keep trying and then eventually you just start to get it and it just starts to unfold. And it works out beautifully that way. Um, so that yeah, that that's the truth bumps that I have for you tonight. Um, I'm going to see. It doesn't look like there's any questions for me tonight. Again, if you have any questions, this would be a great time to ask. Um, but, you know, that's what I have on cleansing, protecting. Um, he, oh, Sandy, yes. Actually, um no, that was the wrong. It's, it, there we go. Uh, that's a that's a fantastic. That's actually what I was going to do um, next week. So every third Thursday on Truth Bumps, I'm going to dedicate it to um, a meditation. Uh, so next week is meditation. Why not to roll your eyes at it? Um, we're going to make it fun, and it's going to be for all levels of. Um, people who meditate. So whether you're just starting out, whether you enjoy it, whether you're having a hard time with it, uh, we'll, we'll focus on uh, the different principles and techniques um, uh, of the meditation. And uh, then the, uh, the, at the later part of the show, I'll actually walk you through a grounded meditation. And the tree root gro uh, grounding meditation is what I have lined up for next week. So we'll actually get to meditate together here live um, every third Thursday. So we've got a question here. Um, when, uh, when you set your intention, so I like to set intention all the time. <laughs> Um, I like to set intention at the beginning of the show. <laughs> I usually, <clears throat> I usually meditate every morning and every evening. And every morning after my meditation, I'm connecting directly with my guides. And I'm setting the intention with them for the day. Uh, a example of setting the intention is like, let's say today I want to remain open and grounded. So I'm receiving all of the messages that are meant for me that I, you know, I'm helping anyone who's reaching out to me and I'm available for them, but I'm also grounded for myself and, and being able to show up um, at the highest and greatest good. So intention setting, um, I actually have, I, um, we could make a whole show out of intention setting, to be honest with you. But intention setting is, uh, is fantastic for at the beginning of the day, at the beginning of a meeting, um, let's say that you are, um, you're about to go into a scenario that makes you a little bit stressed. You can actually take a moment, take a deep breath and set the intention to say, you know what? I'm going to accept what comes. I'm going to be protected. I'm going to be grounded. I'm going to be open. Um, you can set the intention at the beginning of the month for this month. This is my intention for this year. If any of us who do goal setting, I love the idea of goal setting, but my dirty little secret is that I am not very good at it. So I have all these planners because I love them, but then I don't actually, <laughs> I don't actually, I haven't found one that I stick with yet. I'm waiting on one that Jen actually tuned me into. So, um, We'll see, maybe that'll be the one. But if any of us are into goal setting, you know, the, the, the technique is you you set a goal, you do like weekly planning or daily planning. And you've got little goals that you want to meet. You can set intentions at the beginning of each one of those goal sets. Um, so, Scotty, these comments, this is a feature of um, StreamYard, which is really, really nice. 
I, I wanted, I, I, StreamYard is the new software that I'm trying out tonight. And that's why I wanted to try because you can actually click on the comments. You can see the comments on the screen that pop up and actually display them up on the screen. It's, it's actually got a lot of really nice features. I like that. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers your questions on intention setting. Um, and Kat, you're more than welcome. I, I know, I, I suspect most of us are empaths on some level and any empath that is not actively working or um, aware of what they're feeling. It's just, it's so heartbreaking sometimes because it can get really, really overwhelming very quickly, especially in social gatherings um, and especially around family. As much as we love them, sometimes we don't always see eye to eye. I think because we love them so much, then it can sometimes sting a little bit more when we don't. And it just takes a little extra practice to be able to reel ourselves back in and still show the situation some love and tenderness. (laughs) It's the duck, the duck. (laughs) We're going to have to name the duck. (laughs) Um, Because I was just trying this out, the duck branding gets there, but there are options to be able to take it off. So he's just chilling with his little headphones on. He's got his cans on. Um, let's see. Oh, no, no, no. Um, that's a great question. Um, you can do both, either or both. Uh, sometimes during the day, if I'm just having um, a conversation with my guides, I will... Uh, just s- set the intention in my mind. Um, but if I'm journaling, especially if I'm journaling after my guides, sometimes they have messages that I want to document. Sometimes I'll list the intention there too. If you've got a day planner that you use or a calendar, setting that intention at the top is an amazing, um, amazing place uh, to put that because you know throughout your day you can see it and you can kind of pay attention to it. I have even. Um, Let's see here. I've even um, created screensaver or uh, wallpapers on my phone and put intentions on there. So like if there's an intention that um, I want to set for um, a certain period of time, maybe there's something I'm struggling with and I just want to clear it out. It might take a couple days. I'll use a tool like Canva or um, there's a couple of... um, Uh, Heck, you could even just put it on Word and then take a picture with it on your phone and then use that as your wallpaper. Something very quick and simple. Um, But uh, you can write it out. That helps. You can put it in your head. Uh, All of that, just setting, but just having that intention is what really makes the difference. (laughs) I'm cracking up at these comments. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, thank you everyone who's joined. I definitely appreciate you guys making me feel so welcomed and loved tonight on my premiere show. Um, this was all such a a wonderful experience and one that I know, uh, over the weeks will continue to perfect and refine. Um, and, I'm just looking forward to being able to have this experience with you guys. So if you guys have any topics that you would like me to cover coming up, please let me know. You can put them in the comments. You can private message me in Facebook um, and just say, hey, I've always been curious about this. Um, I cover topics over magic. I cover a, a personal magic. So our intention setting, our will, and being able how to create and manifest. I'm very passionate about. Um, I do topics over um, how to connect with our psychic abilities and being able to explore the different concepts that helps us grow and develop into that. Um, if anyone has any questions on spirituality, I I, I like. Um, I'm also a big fan of movies. <laughs> I don't know that we'd want to cover that here, but I love especially scary movies. So, (laughs) Um, but yeah, 
Next week's show is going to be our third Thursday meditation. I'll go over the basic concepts of meditation, why you should embrace them and not roll your eyes at them, as well as guide you through a very beautiful grounding meditation that you can use with some of the concepts that we discussed here tonight over the next couple of weeks and any time in your life when you're feeling just a little too um, crazy. Um and I and I I guess I wanted to make the point that you like being overwhelmed can feel good and bad too. So these these actually like if you're having like a really high um, overwhelm high, you can also use these to kind of ground back in and be in the present moment too. So we'll learn more about that next week. Thank you everyone for the beautiful love. Um, I I just totally appreciate everyone. Have a wonderful night, and I'll see you next week.